Decisions, decisions. Life is so full of decisions. And if you're like me, sometimes you get in your head and you really overanalyze what you're going to do next. And when I say overanalyze, what I mean by that is you worry about making the wrong decision. And that worry, that fear of that can stop you from moving forward. I'm making any decision because you're overanalyzing it. And you're staying in the state of confusion because you're fearful of making the wrong decision. You want to make the right decision. Can you relate to any of this? If so, I got some tips for you to see it differently and how to make the right decision. Recently, this perspective was shared with me that I want to share with you here. And it really got me thinking. And I really feel like it was worth popping popping this up, grab my mic and sharing it with you. All right, so before we get into that tip around making the right decision, saying that in quotation marks, I wanna give a shout out to my girl, Kayla, who left a podcast review. She titled it A Daily Dose of Positivity. I just wanna say, Kayla, thank you so much for leaving that review and blessing me with your kind words. One of the things she noted was that she loved that I shared about my faith, but I wasn't trying to push my beliefs on other people. And I love that you noted that because I never want to be that person. I'm going to be true to myself, be authentic, share with y'all, be real about how I really feel. But I'm not in a position to judge anyone else for what they believe and their own relationship with their creator. So I just wanted to reiterate that and say thank you for acknowledging that. Thank you for listening to the show. and Thanks for leaving a review. So with that said, if you've been listening to the show for a while and you haven't left us a podcast review and you're on Apple Podcasts, and you can actually write a review, please do so. That's ho- That helps our show grow, helps people find it and be blessed by it. And the same is if you are on listening on Spotify or something like that, you can hit the stars, and that's helpful as well. One more thing to talk about before I jump into a story here. And it's about this past weekend. I taught the Clarify Your Vision online event two days in a row. We had over 50 people show up and spend hours clarifying their vision getting super intentional about what they wanted to create this year. So I just want to honor you all who that did show up. If you haven't, guess what? I am turning all the material into an online course. I'll let you know as soon as it's available. My goal is to have it done within the next couple of weeks. So that way, if anyone missed it and still needs to clarify their vision or you find that you need to later on in the year, you have the ability to go and access this process. One of the things I hear people say the most is the, how they love how intentional this process is. They're like, I've done a lot of goal setting work in the past. I've done vision boards in the past, but nothing like this. And this year, it was so cool to make that shift in the way that we designed our goals or clarified them. We made it about impact. We made it about identity, about the way our brain works and the impact we wanted to make. And that made it so much extra powerful. And the data shows that too, how much more motivated we are to go after it when we make that connection. So it was so fun to do that together. Um, I was, I feel so excited about my goals. I stayed up so late last night, uh, finishing out my vision board and getting really clear about the images I wanted on there. I kept on asking myself, how can I make this more of me? more of me versus just showing pictures of everybody else. What about putting me in there in that mix? How can I, I would look at my board, I'd put images in there and I would be like, how can I feel this a little more? And I was then going back and changing images. So it took me a long time, but now I feel so excited about it. I don't think I've ever felt as excited as I do about it now. And I think the improvements that we made to this process, bringing in the latest research and stuff has really helped with that because I really feel this deeper connection to it. And I encourage you to be thinking about your values. That's some work that we did too. We thought about our biggest values and how we can honor them, them more. I have another podcast episode coming up for you about designing a career that you really love. And I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into this whole values concept. So I won't spoil it for y'all yet. I just wanted to bring that up. All right, with all of that said, I feel like that's my most common phrase today. Let's talk about a story that I gotta share with you. And I really do think this is relative to making decisions, but it's just really about my cray cray day and what I learned from it. So this morning, I had left my house because we're still doing this bathroom remodel project that's taking a lot longer than we had hoped. 
And uh, I left to go work at my husband's dental practice office in the basement. And it's been a great setup overall because the Wi-Fi, like, you know, it's a quiet space. Although today I showed up with my laptop that was, I don't think it was very well charged. And I think what happened was, is the room didn't have a good charge because of all the other stuff running in that room. So long story short, when I was facilitating, my my camera just froze, everything froze. It didn't have enough power and it wasn't getting enough power. So I had to pause and leave and try to get back home and try to get my other laptop. So thankfully, I was on the call with some other people, other coaches, and I called one and asked her if she could pop in and try to fill in because obviously everything was frozen. So I was kind of a little panicky because we had a lot of people on the call, you know, tech issues and things. So I ended up rushing out to leave to get to go home. And it's about a 10 minute drive. And um, I was frazzled and all the things. And I ended up running a stop sign. I'm not proud of this, but I did. And I almost caused an accident, long story short. And my car went over to the side. And thankfully, like the other person was paying attention. They stopped on time. And I probably was like an inch away from getting into an accident. So I get home, I'm all frazzled, and I, but yet I'm so grateful because I was like, that didn't happen. I avoided that accident. I felt terrible for shocking other people. Um, but I was sitting there with so much gratitude, like this didn't happen. Remember, gratitude is my word of the year. And man, has God been showing me all these opportunities to be grateful. Um, but then as I was like, as I was driving and stuff after the ac- like potential accident, I uh, get home and you still feel that frazzle, the anxiousness that's happening. And I'm trying to turn my computer on and all of that. And I I asked myself this. I I, I had to repeatedly tell myself this. And what is in your control? What's in your control and what's not? Could you control that you had this tech issue? Was that in your control fully? No. No. So what can you do with what you have now? You know, and how can we focus on gratitude? Like you didn't get in the accident. You have someone that's backing you up, even though I later found out that she had a tech issue and she also got cut off and it was just a cray cray day. And then thankfully someone else jumped in and all the things, it worked out good. So later on in the day, I was so grateful for my team members that I work with. And it I felt like it brought me even closer to them. So it was like, in a way, I was like, oh, this, I felt like was happening for me. And you know, I always say that. And my brain looks for that. Like, you know, after the potential accident, I was like, how did this happen for you? Oh, it reminded you of gratitude. Oh, how did this tech issue happen for you? It reminded you of the connection that, one, that you're human, and two, the connection that you can have with your coworkers when you guys support each other, gave them the opportunity to jump in and support you in a way that they haven't had before. So it was, it really was, when I look back, I'm like, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. When when I was in it, mm -mm, it was so stressful. So I'm sharing this with you because I know that in our lives, as we make decisions, I know that's our topic for today, um, things happen that are out of our control, you know? And it's like, you can either turn the radio station to the low frequency of all the crap and focus on more of the crap that is going wrong and how it sucks. And I did that initially. I was just like, I just want all this remodel construction to be done. I want to, because it's like, otherwise I would have to leave my house. I wouldn't have gotten in a potential accident, like all this stuff. If I didn't have to leave my house because of all the construction and this project was done as it was, we planned on it being done well over a month ago. You know, I started doing that and I'm like, that's not serving me. It's like, I'm turning to that frequency of focusing on what's wrong. And remember our control, the only thing that we have control over is our focus and where our energy goes. Not the circumstances that are happening around us, but where we decide to focus and give energy. So then I felt like I turned the radio station to that higher frequency to bring in that music that was about gratitude, connection, things happening for you, things being used for your good. And it, it felt like that. The rest of the day felt awesome. And I, I can tell you earlier in the day, I wouldn't have felt like I could have turned that day around the way it played out. 
But because I did that work very intentionally about where to guide my focus, it changed everything and the result of that. And I actually ended up staying on the call later, talking to one of my coworkers and just really connecting with her in a way I never did before. And I really believed it was because she was able to jump in and help me. And it's like we built that stronger bond and connection with each other. So again, I really do feel like if you look for it, you'll find evidence to support that things are happening for you. All right, I wanted to share that story with you just in case you needed that, that reminder that you get to decide where your focus goes and that will determine what happens for the rest of the day. Even if you start off the morning and it's a crappy day, you get to decide to turn the radio station, to focus on the goodness that is there or to find the things or bring the joy. And remember too, when it comes to a radio, if you think about this, what is a radio? It's a receiver. It receives information. So you are a receiver. So what are you intentionally receiving? Or are you intentionally receiving things? And maybe you want to be. So you can turn your frequency to receive something else. Think about it. All right. Let's talk about the story relative to today's topic, even more relative. I was listening to... Susie Moore, she is the author of Let It Be Easy, which I love, and I love her, everything she stands for. She's such a delight listening to her talk. Her energy is so high. Anyways, she shared this quote with me and uh, got me thinking about how I worry about making the wrong decision. Or I ask myself, am I making the right decision? And what to ask myself instead? And this is what she said. She said, instead of say, asking yourself, how do I make the right decision? Ask yourself, how do I make the decision right? Ooh, let, let this soak in. How do I make the decision right? I love this because let's think about what, what we mean by this. How do I make the decision right? There's, I think there's two ways of looking at this. One is energetically, what place are you coming from when you're making a decision? And how do you make it from the right energy, the right place? Because I believe that will determine the results for you too. This is why a lot of my clients that I work with that want to switch their careers to do work that they love or to be in a career that's in more in alignment of who they really want to be, one of my major goals for them is to make that decision, to make that switch or to leave from the right energy. Not from the energy of like this sucks, catabolic um, energy state where it's like, um, you know, the victimhood mindset or maybe anger or whatever it is. Not from that place because making that decision from that place isn't gonna lead to amazing results for you because you're not on the right frequency. This comes back to the energy stuff. But can you make the decision from a grateful place, right? Think about this. Can you make it from that higher energy place? Can you make all of your goodbyes good buys? That's my goal for the clients that I'm working with that are making massive transitions in their life. Can it be a goodbye? Can we do it from a high energy place? Because then that leads to amazing things. So that's what I think about when this question came up. How do I make the decision right? So when I'm making decisions, I always want to make sure that I'm making the decision from a higher energy, not a fear-based energy, that I'm not making it out of anger or fear. I always try to check in with myself. And if I feel like I'm making a decision from that place, I really try to shift the energy before I make that decision, if possible. Can I go for a walk? Can I get some rest? Because maybe my energy is already low and I'm tired. I'm coming from an angry place or I'm hungry. Can I get some of those needs met so my energy can go up before I make a decision that's going to impact my life? And then also, can I try to get my energy up higher every day, like starting off in the morning, moving my body, you know, taking time for myself? So that helps me make decisions better when I show up with a better energy. So instead of asking, how do I make the right decision? Because this is a little controlly energy happening here. Think about the question behind it. How do I make the right decision? Well, what the heck is the right decision? 
Is it the decision that leads to a feel-good outcome for you? Like, that's what you're probably thinking, right? That would be the right decision. But how do you ever know? Because you don't know the alternative. We were talking about comparison. You're like, it's a decision that's going to lead to better things. That's going to make me feel good compared to the one that's not. How will you ever know the alternative? You won't. Right? So do we ever know what the right decision is when we're thinking about it from that perspective? But instead, because it's out of our control, but we're trying to be all controlly around it. And sometimes we all try to find all this data around it to make sure it's the right decision and it's most likely to happen in the way we want. And we just start, you know, the controlling energy shows up around it. But if you shift out of that energy and you ask yourself a different question, which is how do I make the decision right? I like this because even as I move forward, I also think about it. This is the second way of looking at it is it's like from this perspective of trusting that no matter what decision I make, I can make it right. I can make it work well for me. Like even if I was like, I'm gonna go back to career stuff because I I coach a lot in this space. Like even if I was to leave my role and I was like confused about if I should do that or not in my head about it and I chose another job and it didn't turn out well. And I'm like, oh, I made the wrong decision. You know, you can go to that place. But instead I can say, how do, how do I make this decision right? Like, how do I make this work for me? How do I make this serve me? How do I get this to lead to something greater? And it's always in your control. This is like giving you the power back. You get to decide to do whatever you want to here with what you see happening and unfolding. And how do we even know, even if you're claiming as the wrong decision, how do you know? Because how do you know what would have happened if you would have stayed in the other thing? You don't. Never know. So it's like going to this place of this energy of trusting yourself and trusting that you're supported. That's that higher energy stuff. Can you make decisions from that place? So if you're struggling making a decision, I want you to ask yourself this. What would the best version of you do? The most, and when I think about the best version of myself, I'll tell you about her. She's faith-filled. She believes that everything is possible. She believes that God has her back. She believes in herself and her ability to figure things out. That girl, what would she do? What would she do in this, in this situation? What decision would she make? That's what I want you to think about for yourself. What would the best version of me do in this moment? What decision would they make? I mean, I do this with like the little things, like being at a restaurant and ordering off a menu. What, what would the best version of myself order? You know, thinking about when, even when you you start that people pleasing stuff that we do, like you really don't want to go to that thing that someone invited you to, but you don't want to seem flaky AF. I told someone that the other day. I said, I got to be honest with you. I was thinking that you might think that I was flaky AF. And she laughed and she was like, Ange, I just want you to be yourself. Like, don't worry about what I'm going to think. But I do, you know, as a human, I do. So because my people pleasing energy kicks in. Like, I don't want you to think this way about me. So if I was coming from a higher energy place, when let's say I wanted to say no to that thing, I didn't really want to go. I didn't see value in that thing that night, or it just didn't feel like it. And I really want to honor myself in that moment. But I was worried about what someone else was was thinking about me. I'm bringing this example up because I know that we struggle with this at times. We want to say, say no, but we start saying yes. And then we say, you know, neglect ourselves, all that stuff. Instead, ask yourself, what would the best version of myself do in that? The one that is faith-filled, maybe that's, that's the best version of yourself. The one that is true to themselves. The one who doesn't let what other people think about them determine their self-worth and how they feel about themselves because it doesn't come from other people. That person, what would they do? Ooh, you know, they'd be, they would say no. And they would do it in a loving, kind way. And they wouldn't get in their head and be worried about that, what that person was thinking. Because they know that that's their own stuff. That's their own mind that they got to work on. And that's not in their control. They're not going to try to control things that are not in their control. So I just thought it'd be helpful to share that example. I've heard that happening lately with some of my clients around just struggling, saying no to things. Um, that they really actually want to say no to. You know what I mean? Struggling being true to themselves, 
So I thought I'd bring that up. Okay, so think about that. So let's go back to the questions. Instead of asking, how do I make the right decision? We are shifting it to, how do I make this decision right? From the right kind of energy, how can I make this decision from the place of knowing that, hey, like I, don't, I can never know the right or wrong decision, but I can trust myself. I can trust myself to figure it out. I can trust that I'll make it right no matter what. That is the stuff to consider. That's the shift. It's a shift from asking this low energy controlling question, how to make the right decision, to this higher energy question of how do I make the decision right? From the right energetic space or after the fact I make the decision, just reminding myself I'm always in control of what happens next, what I decide to do with it, the meaning I place upon it. And trust that I can make it mean that it's always happening for me. Maybe it wasn't ideally what I want. Like this morning, did I ideally want to show up and then have the class I was facilitating, like online Zoom freeze and have to deal with that and almost get an accident? No, I did not want that. I wouldn't have chosen that. So when I came in this morning, I actually asked myself this morning, I'm not going to lie. Before I left the house, I said, am I making the right decision to go in to try to work from the office there? Because maybe I can get away with working at home. Maybe they'll be quiet enough, the, const- the people working on the remodel, and I could just stay at home. I remember like questioning that. And I was like, oh, maybe just get out. And then you have good internet and whatever. So I went. I could be on the other end and being like, I made the wrong decision. Or I can be like, how did that happen for me? Because that's what I'm doing. Now. I'm looking back and I'm like, I can see it made me way more grateful that nothing, that the accident didn't come to be. It made me more connected to my coworkers. Right, I'm seeing the goodness out of it. I'm seeing how I can make that decision right. And I can look back and be like, I think that was the right decision to do that now that I see what came of it because I would have never had those opportunities of like that, that extreme feeling of gratitude I felt earlier probably wouldn't have showed up in my life, that energy, that feeling, that connection probably wouldn't have happened, you know, when I look back. So I just wanted to give you that as an example. All right. Let's do a quick recap with some of my notes. I'm looking at my notes right now. What if you trusted more in your ability to make any decision right, that things were happening for you? What would you do differently? What decision would you make if you were acting like the person that you really want to be? If you if you showed up thinking like the best version of yourself would think, that high energy, faith-filled person who knows that they're supported, who knows that they can figure it out. No matter what life hands them, they will figure it out and they will make it work out best for them. That person, what then decision would you make? All right, that's that's all of this in a nutshell, is thinking about approaching life from that higher energy place. Okay, that is all for today. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Please leave a review if you haven't done so. Also, look out for some upcoming episodes. I'm gonna dive into all categories of our life. I actually just made a podcast plan where I wanna spend some time focusing on, focusing on the career part of our lives and intentionally designing that, getting into alignment in that space. And then I'm gonna talk about the health part of our lives, the relationship part, the fun part, all the the categories that I tend to have people set goals in. I'm going to dive into each category. I'm bringing on some other speakers for you that specialize in that specific category of life. Um, I got a whole plan mapped out for you. So be listening for what's to come. All right. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.